Should we bring in our headliner? Let's do it. He's here and ready to go. His daughter's got a birthday party, so we're going to get him out. Uh, come on in, Harvey. Before Jamal Williams came around, our guest tonight was BYU's all-time leading rusher. He is a current running backs coach that currently has Williams, Tyson Williams, and Chris Brooks wrapping up NFL mini camps with their respective teams. Our pleasure to welcome back to the Wise Guys and first time in studio, the great Harvey Unga. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Well, and and the last time we had you, we had you via Zoom, because um, logistically it just didn't work out. But when when people came in, you're not allowed to tell anybody where this is, because we always <laughs> call an undisclosed location, because we don't have very good security, and we don't want yeah. you know we can't have the masses just coming up, and so. You're, you're, you're on the inside now. You're, you're, you're on one the of the select now. few that knows where the secret studio. <laughs> people know it's someplace in Provo, but that's all they know. So, Appreciate Harvey, it. the Saints just wrapped up their mini camp, and you had Jamal and Taysom together really for the first time in like six years. <laughs> Both of them had really good things to say about each other. You were a grad assistant during their final year back in 2016. How eager are you to see those two play together again this fall? I can't wait. I can't wait. Those two, I mean, one, the energy, obviously, you know, those guys bring to the team, but um, the memories that I had, you know, going into coaching and everything, like, yeah. those two are special. They're really special. And then to see them, like, back on the same team again, that's, how cool is that? And they're going to kind of run the same plays, aren't yeah. they, at the oh, goal yeah. line? It's yeah. going to be the option read? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you you got two guys that did it, at, I mean, the college level and did amazing with it so now going into the nfl it's, i'm sure the chemistry's they, it, they're not going to lose a beat and both of those guys it, it, it's fun to have them together to push each other because they have reputations as workhorses like it like yeah. those guys work both of them am, am i am i right about that no doubt two two of the hardest workers for sure and and i mean great leaders like that that's the one thing i, I don't think people understand like how important that is for the team even in the nfl i think that's huge when you have great leaders it makes a world of a difference when you're teaching your running backs and they all want to go to the show not everyone gets to go to the show some have phenomenal college careers and for one reason or another whether it's an ankle a knee or timing uh, it just doesn't work out um but you look at, at jamal and Taysom. did you have a feeling they were heading to greatness or was it just like you know what? You guys have all the skills, but you're going to need a little luck. I'm biased, obviously. <laughs> I, 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 vote, I mean, any BYU guy, I'm going to root for. Right. But I do believe, like, there's, there is that element of luck. Yeah. Um, whether it's, you know, injuries from other guys or um, I don't know, whatever it is, um, I, I do think there is that part of the game that some guys they you know they just get a lucky break and yeah. um their their careers take off and stuff and and others phenomenal cause careers but once they get there it's not it the just, same yeah it's not the same and and maybe another guy just happens to have a little bit more luck than they do and it it doesn't always work out the same but for those two it doesn't surprise me just like what you guys said, the work ethic they have, the the type of people they are, the character, and it just, um, I don't know, I, I didn't have a doubt that those two would be phenomenal NFL players and, and have the careers that they're having. It's interesting. Uh, help people understand how freakish um, the talent is um, of Taysom. It, because even NFL guys that I run into that weren't BYU guys, like, oh my gosh, he's a freak. What, yeah. what, what are they talking about when they say Taysom's a freak? Because when you're a freak in the NFL, you're really a freak, right? Oh, yeah. It, well, you're amongst the, what, I guess 3% of collegiate athletes that actually make it to that level. But then for those guys, that little 3% of people that make it there, for them to say something like that about you, I mean, all those guys are there for a reason. Uh, most of them are... I guess the freaks on the freaks their in their own, own team, right, right yeah, <laughs> on their own teams. So then to go and do it at that level and to have the respect of not just your own teammates but your opponents, like that's that says 
Yeah, they, 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 I was talking to a couple guys and they're like, nobody that's that big and that strong is supposed to be able to run that fast. It's just not fair. <laughs> or jump that Or high. jump that or exactly. Or move the way he does. It's <laughs> hey, speaking, of, speaking of, of people speaking about you, hey, Harvey, this is Spencer from Lubbock, Texas, my favorite running back of all time. Spencer, I appreciate you, man. That means a lot. I appreciate it. What impressed you the most last year? Jamal Williams, 17 rushing touchdowns, uh, which broke Barry Sanders' record with the Lions, was the most in the NFL, or Tyler Algier's 1,000-yard rushing season as a rookie? Man, that's tough. That's tough. Um, And for me, I I think it's it's hard because Barry Sanders is... Barry Sanders. He's Barry Sanders. Yeah. So to do something like that, it's it's unbelievable. But at the same time, too, like how many guys from BYU in particular had gone to the NFL in their rookie season and rushed for that many yards? Yeah. Little I and he did it. I felt like it was like a half a season that he had done that. Um, so I I don't know. That's tough. I. We'll go with yeah. we'll go with Algier because you were his running backs coach. I'll take yeah, it. let's you go with that it. one. Uh, it, interesting that <laughs> that the Falcons, on the heels of Tyler going for a thousand yards, they go and draft a running back in the first round. They draft right yeah. over <laughs> the the top of him. Did that surprise you first off? And um, is is there a role for two feature backs on an NFL team? I think so. Um, I definitely think that there's enough carries, especially in the NFL, for there to be two, sometimes even three guys. Um, and as far as it's surprising me, shocked the heck out of me. I'll be honest. I, I, I was not expecting that. Yeah. Um, like, how about get a lineman or somebody that yeah, can help your right. running back? Or or to me, I like, statistically, I'm looking like they were ranked last in sacks, last in tackle for losses in the last, I think, like three seasons. So to me, I'm like, get some okay, defense. Yeah, get yourself a, a run stopper or a pass yeah, rush right. or something right, like right. that. Like, you can, I mean, you found Tyler in what fifth round, mm-hmm. and they basically got f- they got first round production out of a fifth round draft pick. Count it, your blessings, it, exactly, and load up someplace else. Right. That's that was my thought process. Well, I only thought maybe they're going to load Patterson because he's expensive, and then just go with the two guys. I don't know. See, yeah, and I, I don't know either because you, now you got two rookies though yeah. trying to run the room, and and you are the Falcons, the the, so no one expects anything, yeah. right? You're <laughs> the Falcons. So yeah, I don't know. It, it was interesting to say the least. We asked Fessy Sataki this same question when he was here on the Wise Guys last week. When the Big Twelve schedule was released, where did your eyes go first? Who were you most interested in seeing that you were going to play? Um, the two teams that are leaving. <laughs> Yeah, Oklahoma, Texas. And were you were you were you stunned that Oklahoma was going to come to your football stadium? I'm not going to lie. I was. I was. I mean, I'm excited for it. I was definitely surprised. Um, but I'm. Yeah, those two games. I, I definitely um, was looking to see if they were. We were going to be able to play them this season or not. And um, yeah, I mean, all the all the games that we get to play in this conference, like I can't wait. It's, it's an awesome conference, and we've got so many good opponents that we get to play against. But I think because of those two leaving, I was. Yeah. You wanted to get him in before yeah, they left. Want, yeah. which, which which is more exciting um, from a coach's perspective? And then, then also maybe tell us if it's different for a player, but to have Oklahoma come to your place in front of 65,000 or to go play at Texas in front of a hundred thousand plus, which from a coaching perspective, which is more exciting, and then, and from a player's perspective, is it different or is it the same? Um, man, I don't. I think I feel like it's the same, um, and I honestly I couldn't choose. They're both they're, they're both great. Yeah, like they're they're both. I mean, to have Oklahoma come in here, like. That's a huge honor for us, and it's yeah. it's, it's something that should I, I dreamed about even playing. Like I was hoping we get to play these types of teams in right. Lavelle Edwards Stadium, and and so for them to come here, like how cool is that? But yeah. then you also, I mean, to go to Texas too, like how cool is that? Like we're you know what I mean, like hundred thousand people. Right, BYU's right. like plays really well there, yeah, and their fans, <laughs> yeah, yeah. every every Texas fan that's. A, 
that's been that was living a few years ago knows exactly who Taysom Hill and BYU are. Right. Because he just right. Yeah. And, Dave, and we Dave, remind them all the time. Yeah, and Dave Dave and yeah. I were there um right on the sideline, right by where Taysom hurdled the guy. And and that is emblazoned on the minds of Texas fans when when BYU comes back in. And for some reason, these Texas fans feel like, oh, I, I feel like if BYU gets going in that game, they're like, oh, here we go again. BYU has our number. <laughs> so that could that could even be though a not a, there's not a kid on the roster from back then, right? Exactly. Right. But the right. fans are all the same, right? right. And they're just like, yeah. hey, remember that one time? And it's like, <laughs> and and uh, it would be fun if. Uh, if for just the first quarter, the Keaton went out wearing number four or number uh, seven, oh. just to <laughs> bring the ghosts back. But um, Harvey Young is with us, BYU's running back coach on the Wise Guys Live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and YSGuys.com all around the world. How do you feel about the running backs room as we sit now just five weeks before they show up for fall camp? I'm excited. I, I love my room. Um it's, it's been a huge blessing and honor to coach these guys and, and um, just just to build the culture that we have in our room. Um, it's It's been been cool to see because there's a few of the guys that came in um, had options to go other places. Yeah. And, and um, I think because of the culture, that was one of the things that, you know, some of these new guys that are, that are coming in, they um, – they reiterated that to me, like you know, I love the room. I love the guys that you you have in there, um, and and the feeling that I got. And for me, that's I love that. It means a lot to me because um, that was something that I, as as much as I love BYU and I love you know the program and everything, um, as a player, that was the the one thing that I missed the most was the the room that I was in and, really? and the guys that I was in there with the culture that that you know Fahu and Curtis and Fui and Manasseh and Joe and like a bunch of those guys built and, and created um, it was I, I can't explain it but I it, was I was just awesome. gonna ask Harvey like is this as deep as that room has ever been and with talent and then you just rattled off all of those names <laughs> maybe not and i was like well evidently not like now i feel like it's a stupid question so i'm not even going to no. ask it but uh but let, let's start with some of the guys individually aiden robbins was a big get out of unlv thousand yard rusher last season um two years of eligibility remaining w when we talked to k-pop about him kelly papinga he's like oh man when when we were going to go play those guys we knew he was all they had like, he's like, that's what they've got. Uh, we just need to stop that guy. <laughs> and so they went in with a defensive plan to stop him, and and that was number one priority, and they didn't. He had like 130 yards rushing against them. So so, so tell us a little bit about Aiden and what skill set he brings to that uh, position for this fall. Well, I don't know if you've seen him in person. Yeah. But he's, he's a... He's a good-looking guy. Um, <laughs> he's jacked. He's, yeah, I mean, and and to be as tall as he is and as big as he is, he's actually got really good feet, um, mm. really nimble, quick, um, and deceivingly fast. Um, but at the same time, it's it's been fun to watch him, um, really like take ownership of the room and and help lead and and step in and and be that kind of a role guy um for, for the room and for the guys um it's it's cool to see because he's he actually has pretty good hands too so yeah. to watch him like be able to get out in the backfield and and if you you know you throw him the ball out of the backfield he's he's got good hands and yeah, and it's six three two thirty. if if he's in the second and third level that's a big advantage. You throw him the ball, and now you got a safety trying to bring him down. That's not an easy assignment for a safety, right? Right. And like I said, I, honestly, I feel like he's deceivingly fast. Yeah. So for guys, I think, I, you know, they might take the wrong angle at him, or um, you know, he's shifty enough that I believe he can make a few guys miss if he needs to. But at the same time, like you said, it's I don't think safeties are really excited to hit guys that are 230 plus pounds. No, I can't imagine why they're yeah, running downhill. <laughs> well, who does he remind you of? Uh, that's that um, you've coached. He reminds me a lot of Jamal. Um, in, in the fact that he's, he's a one cut downhill type guy, mm -hmm. but, 
uh, really good vision, very um, cerebral. Under, like as far as the offense and everything goes, like it, it's cool to hear him. Like even in the spring, although he wasn't able to, you know, go in for team and stuff, it was cool to listen to him actually coach up some of the younger guys and explain blocking schemes and and um, helping them understand how certain plays work yeah. in our offense and stuff. And for me, I'm like, that's that's cool. Like the fact that he understands that mm -hmm. speaks volumes of him and, and his preparation. Keelan Marion was on Sports Nation today, did an interview with him. Fantastic kid. Awesome. Can't wait to yeah. see him on the field. And he said Aiden I, was his number one recruiter of because he knew him from back yeah. in Louisville. Okay. Oh, that's right. That's right. And reached yeah. out yeah. and said, yeah. you got to come here. And now uh, here's a guy who has hardly been here. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but you had a relationship with Aiden back at Louisville even yeah. three years ago. Yeah. But it was interesting that um, that Robbins is like, hey, you, you want to be here because of how good it is. Yeah. No, it's – and I think part of that was having Aiden come here on his visit and stuff. Um, I had Falau or Hinkley and Miles, yeah. um, you know, host him and, and um, kind of – Gave him that vibe, the, the culture of our room and the team and everything like that. Um, and Aiden had a lot of other schools that he could have gone to and other choices. And he actually took his visits after BYU to SC and some other schools. Um, but it was that feeling or I guess, you know, the camaraderie and the brotherhood that he felt from from Ropati and from Miles Davis and, and some of those other guys on the team that was like, yeah, like, as nice as some of these other places might be, like I feel what these guys are talking about. Yeah. And I think because of Aiden feeling that way and now being here for a few months now, like he feels that and it's it's hard to explain, but um I think he gets it. He understands what BYU is about, he understands the culture we have on the team. Um and it's cool to see him promote that. Like Yeah. And and it's not just coming from a like None of us are asking him to sit there and try to sell like this thing. Like it's, I'm sure it's his own words, and he's, you know, speaking from the heart. It's pretty good at it. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> what, sure. what? One. We 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 heard so much about Aiden because that was kind of an early, early signee, and everybody knew about him, and and so he seemed to get a lot of attention, which is great and well deserved. Kind of flying under the radar, maybe a little bit, is Dion Smith, yeah, who who right. comes from Colorado. I think he's. Not getting enough uh, mention just just because he came in a little later right, right. on the heels, but but tell us a little bit about Dion. He, he's not the same size, six feet one ninety. Yeah. But uh, you know, in thirty four games at Colorado, one hundred fifty nine attempts, six hundred fifty three yards, four touchdowns. Very productive at Colorado in the Pac twelve. When he was healthy. Yeah. yeah. When yeah. when healthy. So so tell us about him and what role you see him playing. So he he's actually he's bulked up a little bit. Oh, um, so he's he's about two hundred five between two hundred five to ten. Really? So he's put on some he's put on some good weight, um, but it's he, he's definitely um, a change of pace guy. He he's one of those kind of guys you can put him in space, and um, if we want him to run routes, he can run routes. Um, if we you know want to have him out of the backfield doing that kind of stuff, he's that kind of guy. Um, but he's. He's a speedster. He's definitely got, you know, some speed and some giddy up to him. So it's it's fun to see that just, you know, change of pace. But um, I think very similar to, to Aiden, super smart kid. Mm. Like he's, I mean, in, in the short time that we've been able to have him come out and do workouts and everything and, and um, kind of get the offense down. He's actually picked it up a lot faster than I anticipated. Really? So it's it's cool to see that because he's, um, and we, I mean he told me this on the visit that he he went through numerous coordinators. Yeah. So he's been through a lot of offenses. He understands yeah. a lot of different blocking schemes, a lot of different protection schemes, a lot of different run schemes. Um, and as far as he's concerned, he's like, coach, it's just your terminology. He's like, I I run what you guys run. He's like, I know what you guys are doing. I can draw it up on the board for you if you need me to it's just we named it this this and this for these different coordinators but and you got one year out of him right he, does he, he have one or is he have two. two he actually has oh two. wow so you yeah. got those guys both for two it's interesting okay. harvey um when you go through multiple coordinators everybody's starting fresh every year 
When you go to get a new coordinator, everybody's yeah. starting fresh. Yeah. You you guys have run consistently the same stuff for the last several years, and so you've got guys. And you mentioned uh, Miles Davis and Hinkley, who've been in the system that can help these guys learn because they know exactly what's expected and, and how to do it. Right? Yeah. Oh, for sure. And it, it's it's been um, it's been cool to see because those you would think, I guess, having that kind of competition in the room and stuff, the guys may be like. Do I want to help this guy or whatever? Right. But it's it's been awesome. Like the the as much as you know, Miles and and Hinkley have been helping these other guys out. Like it's it's cool to see. Like they're just they're pushing each other, and that's all I've asked them to do. I'm like, hey, well, just compete. Like I want you guys to help elevate this room more than it's ever been. Like I want you guys to push these new guys, and I hopefully I'm I'm praying these new guys are just gonna push you even more. Yeah, you know. To, to compete and and at the end of the day like it's only gonna make us better can any of these guys return kicks um yeah actually we um we've got a little experimentation we got going on but papinga papinga was it was here and he was talking about rapati <laughs> yeah because we, we, well, well, we keep saying <laughs> like you know, and punt's a different deal a punt you know right, right. And, and, I, I don't think anybody's ever done it better better than my guy Vice at Gehenna, right? Yeah. And, and Vi's not, I, and this is no secret, Vi's not blazingly fast. Vi always used to Shifty. say, yeah, Vi always used to say, most important thing is just catch every punt. Yeah. You gain oh, a lot of yards sure. by just catching every punt. So you yeah. got to get to every ball and catch it. Yeah. He goes, then the next thing is you just got to make the first guy miss and get to a seam. And, and for that, you need quickness. You don't need to go run by people. But kickoffs are different. It's different. And we've yeah. been wanting somebody with just, like you mentioned Dion's really, like somebody's just hit that crease and just go like Adam Hine did back right. a few years ago. So I'm wondering if it, like, so it sounds like you guys are working on some stuff. Yeah, we've got a couple guys in the room. I mean, Hinkley is definitely one of those guys we feel, you know, he's got a good good chance to be that kind of guy. Miles Davis, yeah. another one, Dion. Yeah. Um, and then, who knows, I'd be... I got LJ coming up too, so that's right. Let's, let's talk, talk about, about LJ a little bit. <laughs> this is a freshman kid coming out of El Paso, six two, yeah, two oh five, ran for over twenty one hundred yards and twenty three touchdowns last year. In what high in school, one year? Five A MVP, <laughs> and we're talking about Texas football. Yeah. Um, how good is he, and is he good enough to get carries in September? That's tough because he's he's coming into a room with with some depth. Yeah, and mm -hmm. he's he's coming into a room where you know some of these older guys they've you know, um, they've played at the highest level right. against some of the the best competition and have been, you know, productive at that. So, um, but what has he got? He do it? What has he got that you I, you were attracted to? Shoot, everything. They, really? I mean, the guys as far as athleticism goes, like he's pretty dang athletic. Like the kid is very smooth when he runs. Um, big enough that obviously, you know, if he needs to put his shoulder down and get a couple extra yards, he can. Um, and, and surprisingly, he's he can catch the ball great out of the backfield as well. So to do those things and, and be a, a bigger back, um, it's, I mean, I mean, I'm excited for him. I'm excited to, you know, get my hands on him and kind of see where we're at and hopefully. Is he here yet? Um hour and a half <laughs> is he coming so tonight? he's coming tonight yeah, he's driving yeah he and his folks are driving up yeah they're driving up tonight and fantastic um, yeah they they're i actually just got a picture from his parents where they were at the the utah borderline where the sign says welcome to utah <laughs> no wow. kidding he's, yeah he's so you'll get him uh in individual workouts you actually get to be around guys yeah. and yep. so your first time with him on the field could be later in the week um, yeah, he'll he'll come in, get all of his paperwork done and everything like that, physicals and all that, and then yeah, start. Okay, start rolling big piece with the of guys. the future arriving tonight. Yeah, yeah. What, one of one of our uh, our uh, listeners, Linda Murray, who's always with us every week, she just goes, "It's been great seeing our recruits so impressed with the coaches and their visits, and our current players helping recruit the new recruits." That Texas kid sounds great. So, <laughs> so every, everybody's getting excited about. About your conversation and, and your talk about culture and these kids wanting to be here because that's that's what it really takes. That, so. Yeah, definitely. We got a few more minutes with you before we're going to get you to a birthday party and we're going to hit you up for the five best running backs of all time. Uh, in that room, let's quickly hit Rapati Davis and Mayava Peters. What what do you expect for Rapati in the Big Twelve? Um, 
I mean, hopefully he doesn't skip a beat from last season where he ended it. He he did some amazing things that latter half of the season. Um, showed us that he has the ability to take the top off and, and go for the big yards and the big runs and, and make some home runs. But um, we also, I think the, the Boise State game definitely helped out. You know, he, I know they, they were a couple screens and stuff here and there, but yeah. he's able to catch the ball out of the backfield and, and um, he does a really good job in space. Um, understands how to set up his blocks and, and um, really set up his run um, out in the open field and stuff. So it's um, it's cool to see him. And it, it was good to see him get some confidence with his ball security as well because yeah, I know that, that yeah. was a question early in his career. It's like, man, can we put him out there and really take care of the ball? But he, he proved himself a bit last yeah. year by not putting the ball on the ground, right? Yep. He, he definitely worked on that all season and, and knew – um, if he wanted to get on the field, that was, you know, that was number one for him to just take care of that and everything else will, you know, take care of itself. So what was your biggest assignment for Miles Davis in the off season? He ran really hard, really well early, got hurt and that was it. Um, and we always thought, man, he's fast, but he could use a few more pounds to take the beating yeah. back. Yeah. He comes, where's he at? What do you expect? Um, yeah, no, he's he's definitely put on a little bit of weight, but good weight. Mm -hmm. He's, um, you know, more muscular. Um, but at the same time, I think for, for Miles, um, he's he's new to the position. Right. You're converting a guy who's, you know, been out in the open space his whole career and then trying to transition to bring him back in the backfield. Um, it, it's tough, but he does have... He has the work ethic for sure, but at the same time, um, he shows the ability. And there's a few games we had where he showed glimpses of it. So Wyoming, uh, he was too fast for Wyoming. Yeah, yeah. no, he definitely um, showcased that. And for me, I think a lot of it um, is him just being super confident in the playbook. Because um, I know he knows the wide wide out stuff and he understands all that, but. Um, from the running back perspective, I just I challenged him to just really, really get in the playbook, understand what you know what he's doing, so he doesn't he's not gonna have to think and and just really get out there and run, like, yeah. let loose and, and do what he did against Wyoming and and not look back. So, and when you say he's got to understand where he's supposed to be and what he's supposed to do, um, but also for you, Harvey, I know you've got to look at. Does this guy know everything we're doing? If if our quarterback checks out into a pass, is our quarterback going to get killed because this guy doesn't know who he's supposed to block? Right, right. They have to know it all, and you have to trust him before he can stick him out there, right? Yeah. Yep. Most definitely, and that and that's something that in the spring, he's he definitely showcased that. Like he, I mean, as far as the pass protection and everything goes, in the scheme of that, like he did awesome. Like I was really proud of him because it's not a super easy protection scheme to get. And for him to actually come out there and not have any MAs or anything like that in the spring, it was cool to see. I, I knew like he he really took you know to heart what I was challenging him to do and and came out and showcased it and stuff. So I just got to keep him healthy. Yeah, a lot of people ask me why is this guy not in the field, and I go, I don't. You know what? I haven't been to practice enough. But if he can't pass protect, you can't be, he out can't be on the field. That's and people right. are like, oh, I know, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. And Harvey was part of a long line of dudes that could <laughs> really pass protect. Well, yeah. Those names you mentioned, Fui and Manasseh, and these guys. I mean, they prided themselves yeah. on hiding in behind the guard or the <laughs> tackle. Here comes the safety or the back around a blitz. Thinks he's got a free reign to the quarterback, and then they step out. Bam. Slobber knocker, mouthpiece flying out. <laughs> Harvey used to do that too. You guys took a lot of pride in that. Oh, uh, definitely. Lancer was, I mean, an O line guy. So yeah, yeah. he always told us we were an extension of the O line. <laughs> so we, we took it to heart and we, uh, yeah, I mean, all of us loved it. But it, I mean, I guess it was easy if you're, or easier when you're 200 and. 40 plus pounds. Right. So yeah. it, it helps. Yeah, those are some big dudes. <laughs> Mayava Peters was the quarterback in the bowl game, and yeah. that's where we saw his running ability. Uh, and now he's switched to running back. We were there de uh, the day he tweaked his knee in practice and yeah. was kind of yeah. shut down the rest of the way. What's his What's his anticipated role? So, sadly, we're, um, he may not be with us this fall. Okay. Um, just couple things he's trying to take care of off the field gotcha. um 
So that's that's to be determined. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, just yeah, wait, waiting to see. If if he does if he does work his way back in, does he stay in the running back room? Could he go out and play slot? I mean, he's athletic. Yeah. He can play a lot of different things, right? He can, he can, and he showed us that in spring before he got hurt. Yeah. Um, yeah, we we utilized him in geez, every way possible. I mean, he was in the backfield running the ball. Um, we were able to motion him out into the field and. He actually was a really good route runner and right. has great hands. Um, but with his running ability and he's actually, he's pretty fast. We started to implement him into the, the jet scheme yeah. and mm-hmm. had him running some jets and stuff like that. So the, the, the kid can do, he can do a lot. He's um, yeah. He's super athletic and, and surprisingly like, one of those guys that you don't have to sit there and coach over and over and over. Like he'll go out there. If he messes up, he'll correct it. And the next time he does it is exactly how you wanted it to be. And just one of those kind of guys, I don't know how to explain it, but yeah, look fast learn. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed that he can get things squared away and get back, back with the program. Hey, what, what does Keaton Slovis bring to the running backs room? How, how, how is whatever he's got <laughs> going to help your guys? Um, I mean, the guy can. I mean, he can sling the ball. That's that's a it's a given. I mean, he's he's done it in the past, and and even in the springtime, it was cool to see. Like, um, he's in. I mean, I've seen a lot of good quarterbacks, but yeah. he throws the ball just as good as any of them. And and for us, like running backs, it's. I mean, that helps us at time because if you can soften the defense and and you know take the top off and let guys go and and or just i mean even just completing your intermediate routes and stuff like that it it definitely helps with the run game now you're not running into this eight-man box and Mm -hmm. and guys aren't just stacking it so it's i think with his ability that way um it'll definitely open up some run lanes and stuff but surprisingly too he's He's pretty athletic. Yes, he is. Yeah. Like he That's, can move. That was the thing I was most surprised. When I saw him run around, I'm like, oh, I didn't know yeah. that Keaton could run around like that. <laughs> he, That's going to surprise some move. people. Because they all saw him in that air raid offense at SC where he was just catch and get it out, catch and get yeah, it out. Yeah. But I, I actually, a couple times he took off and ran, and I thought, okay, yeah. this could be a nice little thing that people don't know about. Harvey so. Unga is with us on the Wise Guys. Glenn from the Philippines checking in. Says, hey, Harvey, thanks for being on Uh Great to oh, hear from that. you. Let's finish, and Blaine will run you through this, for your top five NFL running backs of all time. This from a running back who uh, ran for 3,455 yards and 36 touchdowns at BYU. Also caught uh, passes for 1,085 yards and nine more touchdowns. So so you're a, a perfect person to roll out who the best five <laughs> running backs all time are in the NFL. And, and do you want to go reverse order or from one through five? What do you want to do? You want to start with your fifth and go to the f- first, or you want to go first through fifth? First through fifth. Okay. Okay. So that number one of all time. Walter. Walter Payton. Sweetness. That's, yeah. I yeah, my, my old teammate that. Jim McMahon played with him, and yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm convinced that Jim could have thrown for 4,000 yards a year, but he just kept tossing it backwards to sweetness, <laughs> which was a good, good yeah. choice. Is that but, who you wanted to be? Um, Honestly, there... There was so many running backs. Like growing up, my, my dad had me watch. Yeah. Every, and it's honestly, it was weird. I actually played quarterback growing up. At Timview? Ah. Uh, well, no, not at Timview. At, at, well, just as a kid. When you were okay. little, little. Like, Is it because you were big and fast? I, well, I think for whatever reason, being lefty, it, um, I don't know. Some guys like, I don't know if they just liked seeing guys throw with their left hand or something, but. Um, yeah, I mean, I grew up playing that, so it was. I gravitated to a lot of the quarterbacks, but um, naturally, Steve Young, who was yeah. also a good yeah. runner. Yeah, but, um, yeah, no, Dad, Dad definitely had me watch a bunch of. So wow. Peyton, and, number and, one. And Harvey's dad's one of my goats. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that. He's the best. I love <laughs> He's him. A good dude. So okay, one is Walter. Who's two? Um, Barry. Oh yeah. Yeah, Barry's, and that's hard too because I. One yeah. Or two is tough. I, that's I tough. Yeah, that's a tough one. So my, my old teammate Kurt Govea played against Barry, and he goes like that. He's the guy that the night before you're playing them, you just can't sleep because it's just like, oh no, like I'm gonna be in the open field and I'm not even gonna touch him. He goes, some yeah. guys don't want you to tackle him, other guys don't want you to touch him. Barry didn't want you to touch him. Yeah. His highlight 
films are amazing. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Was, I mean, and he was on a bad team. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, crazy. To do what he did. Oh. With and, and not to knock on any of those guys blocking. I love every old man in the world, but it's unbelievable what he did and, and what he was able to do. And, and so yeah. So All Walter, right. then Barry. Who's your three? Um, this one was tough. It was kind of a, a tie, but I I went with Jim Brown. All right. Jim Brown, Cleveland Browns. Yeah, yeah. And he was he was a big dude he and was, physical, yeah, and he was way yeah. ahead of his time. Yeah, just I mean the production he had, I mean rushing yards and whatnot, and just the physicality, the way he played the game. Like was, I, I I'm sad that my old high school guy Ernie Davis didn't get to go play side by side with Jim because he passed away from leukemia after winning the Heisman Trophy at Syracuse. But for my high school, mm. Jim Brown and Ernie Davis in the same backfield. Oh man, that's that never that's happened. Pretty good. Never oh, happened. But yeah. they both followed, went to Syracuse and on to the Browns. So okay, Jim Brown's number three. I like that. I can't argue with any of these. Number four, uh, AP Adrian Peterson. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. And let's see which one of your buddies was the lead blocker for Adrian. Was it Manasse? Follow. Oh, it was Fahu. Fahu. That's yeah. right. Fahu was plowed the when, road for eight. When he was yeah. in his prime, he he was fantastic. Oh, unbelievable. And Thank who you. has an ACL reconstruction and comes back six months later and leads the league in rushing again? Right. That, that guy. Yeah, I think he, that yeah. guy. Breaks the single season rushing record, too. Like, yeah. it, And that, I mean, for me, it was um, just seeing it in person. So when we're, we're playing against him, like to watch him run the way he ran like oh so fun unbelievable so i i um that's a that's a great one he's yeah i had to i had to put him up there who's gonna make the last who's gonna be the the last last pair i know there's a lot of great guys who's gonna be five man i'll be honest i couldn't decide (laughs) um for me it was like a four-way tie three three four-way tie but i I was going to go with Marshall, Marshall Falls. Oh, I love yeah. that. Not and Tony Mar- Dorsett, not to Emmett Smith. Well, I, 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 I'm Eric Dickerson. I, Eric Dickerson. Like, I mean, there's, so, there's so many good ones. Yeah. Here, here's why I love Marshall. Marshall's one of the most complete backs that I ever played. For sure. Because if, if you just loaded up the box, they'd throw him screens and get him downfield in the pass game. And he was so yeah. deadly, whether it was catching the ball in the backfield or run the ball. I think that's a great choice. Marshall's great. It, it was it was hard because I think LaDainian Tomlinson. Yeah, there's oh, another one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I couldn't decide. And then Marshawn was the other. Yeah, Marshawn. Yeah. All those He's great decent. guys. <laughs> right? like, there's so Marshall, many good ones. Marshall, I thought, had the edge. I mean, yeah, he yeah. holds the record for receptions for running backs. I think he's like 6,000 yards receiving. And then I think he's the only back that's posted a thousand thousand. Like yeah, I think you're right. And caught for over a thousand. So. Uh, he he was a great one. We got to call some of his games in college, so we we have a little soft spot for Marshall. We're not going to yeah. argue with that one. So. Curling guy says uh, thanks, Harvey, for all your hard work. You make BYU great. And then, <laughs> appreciate it. Jay Bardsley eleven says thanks for all you do, Harvey. My bro still talks about the good old days at Tim View playing with you. Spencer, yeah. Spencer. Oh, and, and you know what? The, Outside the echo chamber goes, what about Bo Jackson? So he was the other guy. He was. I, he I just missed the it list. Was, <laughs> it was between those those four that I, I couldn't decide. Because Bo, obviously, I mean, his career was cut short. Yeah. But man, he was um, good. Yeah, when he was in his peak, he was like one of the greatest athletes of all time. Right. Did you did you do Stephen Marks said that uh, his first BYU jersey was number forty five? No. Yeah, he <laughs> says I'm so glad you got the running back coach's job. You can teach oh, him how to play, and that's that. Steve from Olympia, Washington. So and Mike like, just me so, with yeah. us from Beaumont, Texas. Everyone chiming in. Harvey, wish your daughter a happy birthday for us. I appreciate it. it yeah, it was but, actually Makai's. Oh. But, it's oh really? My, yeah, my sons. But oh, Makai is your sons. Yeah. Okay. My, my daughter's is actually in a week. Oh, so okay. yeah. We'll tell her happy so, birthday coming will, up, and then tell Makai that tell we didn't Mackay think we it was hers we gotta, today. We gotta get, you gotta get you out here to get and get to the birthday party. We we I appreciate you guys. Um, we love the job you're doing there, and sounds like that running back room is deep. Maybe not as deep as <laughs> Fahu Manase, uh, Fui, and. The guy right here, all in the same running back room. That's something special. That's a bunch of NFL guys right there. Yeah. But but this one's stacking up to be pretty awesome. It's I I love this group. I love this group. It's it's um, I mean I'm excited to to see you know how these guys handle business and stuff. And and it it was random, but 
Um, I actually saw Chris Brooks today. Too. Yeah. So oh, it's, yeah. it's cool. Like for a guy like him to come back to right. BYU and to work out and, and make he. I mean, this is home for him. He feels like so that's, that's why good. he's coming back and training and stuff. Like and I want guys to feel like that. He's going to Dolphins camp, right? Yeah. Good. Yeah. He just yeah. got he just got in from Miami on Sunday. Yeah, Sunday night. So it's it's cool to see that. Like I, I hope these guys feel that bond and that you know camaraderie that they they want to come back and. Wayne well, Robbins told us that, that he's here because you put guys in the NFL. Yep. Uh, well, I, that <laughs> helps, right? Uh, so, yeah. So I, I want to, and this last last thing is you're as you're heading to, to the birthday party. Um, can you take credit for going to the defense when you got in this role and saying, um, "Give us Tyler back. We need Tyler <laughs> Algier back over here." Like, what in the world is he doing over playing linebacker? We need him over here. Was that you? I, I can't take credit. I, like, <laughs> Honestly, Kalani was a big factor in that. He, um, I mean, he saw what I saw, and I'm, I'm just glad he did too. Because at first, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to get fired or not for <laughs> having <laughs> having Tyler come over or whatnot. But it, it um, yeah, Kalani. I think you know he he saw it from the get go, and he felt like Tyler would definitely be a guy. And so it, um, yeah, I give I give credit to Kalani. That's <laughs> wise uh, man. No, is, give credit to Kalani because Kalani had the clout. To back him up, but yeah. I'm telling you right now, word has it that this guy wanted that guy back on offense, and that was a great recognition of the talent. Atlanta Falcons. Was, uh, thank you, <laughs> yes, for all that. And so we does, all thank you. So we does all thank Tyler you. and his family. Yeah. Uh, Harvey, so. uh, thank you. We'll see you uh, at practice here, just yeah, around just, the corner. Yeah, just no, not that long. Up. So it's coming up soon. I appreciate you guys. All right, thank thanks, you. The Harvey. great Harvey Unga, outstanding running backs coach and uh, running back when he was at BYU and with us on the wise guys so he's going to slide out next week sherry do is going to slide in here the executive vice president of deseret management corporation the ceo of deseret book one of the world's largest byu fans and so we look forward to having sherry do with us uh next week